What is it about when it comes to face masks? Is it your politics? Because uh, there is a, a suggestion. This is nonsense, by the way, but there is a suggestion from some that actually it's uh, like if you're a Brexiteer, then you're likely to be... So you're a Brexit voter, you're likely to be an anti-vaxxer and you're likely to therefore not want to wear face masks. Uh, this is high-octane high cobblers, everybody. Um, and I'll raise you two obvious areas. Melanie Phillips, the right-wing columnist. Rod Little, the right-wing columnist. Uh, both of whom take this stuff incredibly serious. Uh, they would not be, um, I don't think, at any level seen as uh, people that would ordinarily roll over at some government advice. Here's the thing, and here's what we know. Wearing a face covering in shops, of course, as we know, we discussed this uh, on the station yesterday, will be mandatory from 24th of July. Those who fail to comply could be uh, fined 100 quid. Now, good luck with that, by the way. I'd imagine that, in fact, the police were brilliant yesterday. They were out the traps, very early doors on this, saying, you think we're going to be policing? A folk going to be ringing 999 saying there's a man in B&Q without a mask on? Uh, well, you're in the right place if you need one, I guess. Uh, the police haven't got time to do it. They haven't got the resources to do this. You could end up calling out the entire available cops on one shift just to deal with a melee going on in one shop. Health Secretary Matt Hancock said it would give people more confidence to shop safely and enhance protections for those who work in shops. And he wheeled out some stats about people working in shops who are more likely to have contracted coronavirus. Now, this move is in England. It's in line with Scotland and other major European nations, Spain, Italy, Germany. I think I'm right in saying, Ricky, that, that Wales are not on the list here. Wales have not gone full whack on the mask. We'll, we'll investigate that, but I think that's the case so far. Uh, cases are, are dropping, of course, and this is the confusion, but I want to know where you come in on this. I'll tell you where I come in on this in just a second. So cases of coronavirus are dropping, although we still have that... It's very worrying. I was talking to a a, a senior medic uh, at a, an event at the weekend, and I was saying, look, there's 60 odd million, 66, 67 million people in this country. 400,000 have had coronavirus. <laughs> there's a lot of people still to get this thing. Of course, there may be more people who've had it and got through it, didn't realise they had it. I understand that. But cases are dropping. The official cases, as per those old press conferences that we used to have every day, show that cases are dropping. But the instruction to wear a mask has intensified. Now, I know what you're thinking. That doesn't make any sense. Surely, if, if the rating hasn't increased of late, aside from some small cases, why are we on... Well, we must be on the right path, you'd think, to being virus-free. Why are we now on a campaign to mask up like never before? 0344 499 1000. Is wearing a mask comfortable? No, it isn't. It's supremely uncomfortable. Uh, I slightly struggle with it. Does it look good? That's a no-brainer. Of course, it doesn't look good. It looks sinister. It kind of changes your worldview a little bit. The world now looks like some kind of scene from 28 Days Later, where the few that have survived protect themselves against an inevitable plague. I look across the railway carriage as I come into work. There's one man. Oh, he's a card wearing the, the Hannibal Lecter thing. It's about the fifth person, by the way, that day I've seen doing that. Uh, I spot another man get on at the next station wearing a sort of standard medical mask, but he's clearly reused this a number of times, and it's incredibly dirty. He looks like a grubby surgeon that got struck off years ago and can't let it go. Uh, and then, of course, I arrive at the I arrive at London Bridge, and there's the kind of fashion step group of young girls there. Uh, they've got more fashion bound, wacky images, pictures of teeth, some patterns and colours on there as well. Um, and of course, the one thing we've all got in common is we look ridiculous. We look absolutely ridiculous. We feel awful. Uh, it's as almost. I mean, it's scary, isn't it? It's a bit scary. It's a grim reminder, I suppose. Partly our primal thing of what might happen. It's a sign that there's death in the air. And to make it worse, we're being asked to wear them at a time when things are getting better. Or are they? Now, remember this. This was Jenny Harris, Deputy Chief Medical Officer. She said this a couple of months ago. If a healthcare professional hasn't advised you to wear a face mask, it's usually quite a bad idea. People tend to leave them on. Uh, they contaminate the, the face mask and then wipe it over something. So it's really not a good idea. Not a good idea. And then the World Health Organization said this. Medical masks like this one cannot protect against the new coronavirus when used alone. Right, there it is. So uh, there wasn't really what you'd call a body of evidence 
coming from anybody back then. So it's been ambiguous. It remains confusing. You don't have to wear them in a pub, but you have to wear them in boots. You don't have to wear them at a protest, but you have to wear them in Smiths. You don't have to wear them at football practice, but you would have to wear one if you wanted to go and buy a football. That is the sort of level of confusion. I'm smelling a rat here. Now, I've got no evidence for this, by the way, and I I tend to think nobody else has either. Um, When I hear politicians talk about stuff, I mean, yes, it's we, we, we tend to think it's only our country where politicians are inconsistent on this. And if you look around the world, you will find the same accusation is levelled at pretty much everybody in terms of how they should have responded. Should lockdown have been sooner? Is the social distancing right? What about the hand washing, sanitizer availability? And of course, the big one seems to be the mask. So to some places you wear them. All the time, in other places, you don't have to wear them any of the time. Some have got the same regs as we've kind of now got. Public transport, I think France is public transport. You don't have to wear them when you're in work. Is there any places you have to wear them when you're in work? I don't think there is. Um, uh, but certainly going to work. Well, Here at our place, when we're walking around the building, we have to have a mask on when you're at your desk because we've got good social distancing going on. You don't have to wear them. There's a lot of confusion. I'm now wondering, here's my take on this, okay? Essentially, I think I'm a coward. I think I'm probably a coward. And I'm going to say, stick that flipping mask on your face and stop moaning. Get the mask on your fizzog and let's just work on the basis that it, there might be something in this. Should we just work on that basis? Do you want to take those odds? Would you go down to Paddy Power with three grand in your hand and say, I'd like to put this on the fact that wearing a mask will definitely make no difference. You wouldn't do it. It's kind of in the... So, yeah, I, I kind of share a lot of <laughs> the kind of cynicism. I'm, I'm with Rod Little. I think I'm with Melanie Phillips on this, that I'm just working on the basis that I might as well wear one of these things just in case. It's not going to stop me getting coronavirus. I may have had it. I've got no idea. I'm not aware I've had it, uh, but I could get it in many ways. But it does form, it's a kind of bit of the pie chart, isn't it? It's a bit of the pie chart. So you've got the hand washing, you've got the not going to very, very busy places, you've got the social distancing, and you've got the mask. And even if the mask forms 5% of protect, just 5%, and yes, it looks bonkers, it feels bad, and I'm supremely uncomfortable with it. There is a part of me that thinks, am I being taken for some kind of, fool here on being asked to wear this it just I, I am living one of those apocalyptic movies i'm living it right now what we thought could never happen you know it frightens me on a sort of side point how quick we just adapted to all of this there was no real rebellion i mean there's some, a few dissenters at the back broadly speaking we just kind of slid into doing what we're told i'm thinking is it i don't want to sound too conspiratorial But you can imagine the boy sitting in the mountain cave somewhere in South America controlling the world. The puppet masters who are saying to us, ah, this is, yeah, let's get them to wear masks. Let's see how far we can push it. So I I do understand that cynicism. But I've talked to enough virologists, epidemiologists and clinicians on this programme alone in the last couple of months that would convince me it's probably better on balance to wear the mask. So let me ask the question, why are you not wearing the mask? Why would you say no to the mask? On what basis would you say no? What is your backstory, your qualification, your reasoning for unequivocal? I mean, very passionately, I'm looking on social media. People are losing their, yeah, uh, over this, uh, over the mask. I've got to wear the mask. I don't, none of us want to wear a mask. I don't want to have to consider my social diary based on the fact that if I go out Uh, There's a few places I can go, and if I do go to the pub, it might be really busy, and that will make me not want to go to the pub because I'm going to queue up forever. I can't. We can't have holidays in the same kind of way. If you do, the considerations are multiple. It's a complete royal ache. It's a right pain in the proverbial. We all get that. On balance, wear the mask, man alive. Stick the mask on. Think it. Would you? I mean, kids don't have to wear them if they're, what, under 11, I think it is. If your kid's 12 or 13, you're going to say to your kid, don't wear a mask, son, nothing to see here. Are you actually going to say that to your own kid? So I I know I'm sticking my neck out here a bit because there is a real body of thought. And when Mark was covering the show yesterday, I think, what was the the straw poll? How did that end up, Ricky, on yesterday's programme? 
So 90% of people, it was thousands of people took part in the straw poll. I know it's a straw poll, but nonetheless, 90% said no to wearing a mask. What's up with you? What is up with you? It's a mask. It might, it's not going to save your life, but there's a component to it where you might just find yourself thinking, OK, it's a little bit of protection. It's also a little bit of protection for other people. So what informs your view not to wear it? What informs your view not to wear it? Is it political? Is it medical, firstly? Have you got empirical medical evidence that this is utter nonsense and isn't going to work in any shape or form? Is it political? Is, is it that sense of, I'm kind of in the... I mean, I keep hearing this phrase, anti-vaxxers and anti-mask wearers are, are kind of two uh, cheeks of the same bot. Um, is that right? Is it that? You simply don't trust the government. You don't trust the establishment because you intrinsically don't or because you think on this particular score you've got specific evidence? Uh, or do, are you running with raw instinct on this? What's in the tank? Is it just full of raw instinct? I've got a feeling either I'm not going to get it or I've got a feeling this mask malarkey makes no difference. 0344 499 1000. Let's get the phone lines open on this one right now. Where are, what are you sensing about this mask caper? And what's the reason for not wearing it? I would be shoulder to shoulder with you in terms of wanting to get things back to normality. And it does seem to go against the advice. Get back to the shop, spend your money, get out there, have a good time. Oh, but now you've got to dress up as a surgeon to go and, and, and buy your groceries. Uh, it, it, it kind of goes a bit against that. I, I'm thinking that this has come, there's a reason this has come around. And the government might, you know, I'm hearing this figure of 120,000. I don't know if that's true or not. Nobody does. But I'm just hearing this. It's rattling around in my head. And I'm thinking, I'm not a betting man in this respect. Get the mask on the face, sharpish. And don't take the risk. Don't bother with the risk. You don't have to take the risk. So why would you? Uh, so your reasoning behind it. So we've moved on from what with the announcement. What is your specific reason for not wearing it?